Welcome to SF360 Movie Scene, a monthly show all about films and film events here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Cheryl Eddy, Associate Arts and Entertainment Editor at the San Francisco Bay Guardian. And I'm Rod Armstrong, Programming Associate with the San Francisco Film Society. This month on Movie Scene, we're going to be talking to Cornelius Moore about the 40th anniversary of California Newsreel. We're also going to have on Jason Sanders from the Pacific Film Archive talking about their upcoming mini retrospective of Hong Kong director Johnny Toe, one of my favorites. Excellent. Uh, then we'll have the fearless programmer from uh, the Parkway and Cerrito Theaters, Will Vajaro, and his lovely wife, Monica. And then we'll give our recommendations for the month of May. But first, let's, let's take a look at a scene from the three-part documentary series from California Newsreel on race. There is no question that individual human beings are different, one from the other. Our eyes confirm this day in and day out. Skin color, body shape, hair form, eye shape. For several hundred years, we have used these visual differences to classify people into four or five groups we call races. We have a notion of race as being divisions among people that are deep, that are essential, that are somehow biological or even genetic, and that are unchanging, that these are clear-cut, distinct categories of people. And the beauty of the race business is that you can identify people by just looking at them. You don't even have to look at their genes because one manifestation of their genes is there, namely skin color or eye shape or hair shape. And then that's the key to everything. And joining us now is Cornelius Moore from California Newsreel, which celebrates its 40th anniversary this year. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit about the clip we just saw and also how it represents the organization as a whole? Well, it was a clip from a series called Race the Power of an Illusion, which is three parts. And the, the, my coworker, uh, Larry Edelman, executive produced it. And it was, the idea is to look at the issue of race which is very, very central to the development of this country and also, um, you know, the world, and to debunk s some issues around it. I mean, the first part looks at the scientific development of the theory of race, and the second part looks at U.S. history and, and how race is central to the formation of the country, and slavery, and the, the um, what happened to Native Americans, and to, to posit that, you know, race has been socially determined, but, but it the third part is looking at how race has actually lived. This, it, even though it's socially de determined, it really is real and determines how people's lives are lived and what power they have or don't have. And the documentary is predominantly used in educational settings, which is part of the mission of exactly. Newsreel? Exactly. We're primarily a distributor, and one of the reasons for doing this series was to, to get product to distribute to, um, to educational institutions. That's the basis of our, our mission. It's, I mean, we're we came, we're an organization that came out of the the turmoil and the the social activism of the 1960s, and so this is a continuation of our our mission is to have an impact on the way people look at uh, look at society. And uh, one of the recent films that you guys are distributing is a locally made documentary called Faubourg Treme about New yes. Orleans. Maybe mm -hmm. you could talk a little bit about that. Well, it's a film that it took a, a while to get done. I mean, I think the, f the filmmakers um, began it before tr Katrina, and, and we as distributors try to be involved with the, a, pro a, a project, actually even before it's finished, because, you know, being a distributor, we know in the educational market who would want it and, and, and even can give advice to the filmmakers about it getting, um, you know, the thrust it could take, um, you know, more history, maybe less um, current day things, you know, whatever, we can counsel people. And it's a, it's a project that I followed for a number of years before it got finished. So I was really glad when it was finished. Mm -hmm. And so you were there kind of from the inception as well? Well, not from the inception, but you know, pretty much into it, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a few years into it. Mm -hmm. And the, f the film is about, uh, specifically about the, a district in New Orleans. Yeah, it's, th it's, um, the oldest, perhaps the oldest black neighborhood in, in, in the U.S. It uh, has a great interesting history about um, a, a large 
percentage of the people in the neighborhood were free, free people of color, the largest number of people in, in, in uh, the Deep South. And it also looks at how the civil rights movements was very, started there in the Deep South. Um, Homer Plessy, who was the plaintiff in the Plessy versus Ferguson um, Supreme Court decision, which basically constitutionalized and made legal uh, segregation. And so people don't really know that. Um, I think it's an important thing that for people to know. And certainly after Katrina, that people have a, an idea that there was this well established uh, community of people who were fighting for civil rights and human rights a long time. So then a school would contact your organization and get a hold of the film to show Yeah, we promote to the schools, to colleges, to universities, to community organizations. We also do um, home video distribution as well. Mm -hmm. And so now that the organization has been around for 40 years, what, uh, what do you foresee for the next uh, maybe 10 or so? It's hard to look forward 40 yeah, hard, years. Right. I mean, we'll, I mean, there's a lot that needs to be changed. So we're dedicated to social change, whether it's you know dealing with real issues around race, African American history. We we also have started a new uh, component looking at globalization, which we're very excited about. So if people for further interest, uh, do you have a website? Yes, www.newsreel.org. Um, okay. N e w s r e e l. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for being with us and. Uh, now we're going to take a look at a clip from Johnny Toe's film, Running on Karma. And joining us now from the Pacific Film Archive is Jason Sanders. Welcome. Thanks, Cheryl. Welcome. Welcome. And uh, we just saw a clip from Running on Karma, which is one of the Johnny Toe films you're going to be showing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, you need to explain exactly what was going on there. Well, that particular <laughs> scene is pretty great because it starts off the sort of police procedural type thing. These like, you know, button down detectives going up the stairs. So it sort of begins with that. Then, of course, it discovers this like supposedly severed head and a little tin can. But of course, the head's actually this Indian contortionist, so he like <laughs> leaps up. It suddenly becomes a sort of supernatural horror of how this little guy can get into a little box and kill all these people. But then from there, one of the main people who helps solve the crime is Andy Lau, the famous Hong Kong star. And he's a, a bodybuilder, so he's in a huge muscle suit. He uh, falls in love with this private detective, so the movie then segues into this sort of uh, romantic comedy for a bit, and a madcap comedy. However, the stripper, the male stripper, Andy Lau, he also is an ex-Buddhist priest. So with them, they all help solve this crime together. And then it sort of becomes the last half hour, like as the Buddhist priest, he also can fly through the air, so then he's able to uh, battle these various evil superhero type villains. So it becomes a sort of Spider-Man type thing, and then at the end it settles down with this sort of Buddhist scripture type peace and love type thing. So it's sort of like this Spider-Man redoing, or written by the Dalai Lama or something. So are all of Johnny Toe's movies this confusing? Maybe you can tell people who aren't familiar with well, his it's, work. Well, yeah, I think it's not actually confusing because uh, although he takes several genres and throws them into one film, it's not confusing at all because throughout his career he's worked on several genres each individual ones. Running on Karma is just distinctive because it's like eight genres in one movie. 
as opposed to his normal thing, which is like uh, each film would have like a genre in it as well. Mm -hmm. He started off like in 1980, like uh, with he made a movie when he was in his early 20s called The Enigmatic Case. He had worked his way up as an errand boy in a TV studio, so they gave him a chance to direct this movie, which is a martial arts film. He then decided, well, I'm not ready, and he himself decided to go back to TV and like work learning the craft. So then later on, uh, after about 10 years, in the early 90s, he started making uh, more uh, popular films with a lot of actors and actresses from uh, like the Hong Kong star system. So he worked with Stephen Chow of Kung Fu Hustle. He did Barefoot uh, Kid and Justice My Foot. Uh, he worked with uh, Chow Young Fat in this comedy or this uh, romantic melodrama, All About All Long. He did a gangster film, The Big Heat, etc. Mm -hmm. From then, he then uh, sort of formed his own production company called Milky Way Image in like 1994 and 1995 with a collaborator, Y Kafai. And together, they sort of reinvigorated like Hong Kong cinema. Because as you guys know, like in 97, the handover, a lot of the main Hong Kong stars and directors, Choi Hark, John Woo, Chow Yun Fat, etc., they all left. Right. Or just weren't as active anymore. So they're sort of a doldrums. Like, as you guys probably remember in the Bay Area, like 10 years ago, you couldn't, like, swing a fist without hitting someone who had just programmed a Hong Kong, like, retrospective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty much totally gone. There's Frank Lee over at the Four Star who's doing a little bit, but really that's all gone. So this Johnny To series, like, through this one director, Johnny To, we're sort of showing, like, nearly every genre that Hong Kong's done in the past 10 years, which mm -hmm. is just great. What are the, some of the movies that you're most pleased to be showing in the series? Well, of course, there's Running on Karma, which is sort of everything together. Then we also have uh, another sort of his like more like out there film, like a Full Time Killer, which he made like in '99 or something like that. That's with uh, Andy Lau also. That's very sort of Tarantino-esque in a way, mm -hmm. like these sort of two rival hitmen who decide to top one another in terms of their uh, killing technique by actually duplicating films. So like they'll like have like uh, shootouts inspired from particular from like Point Break or something silly like that, and that gave To a chance to sort of totally like let his imagination go crazy. So there's that end of the spectrum, but then also we have more uh, traditional uh, gangster type movies like The Mission, which is a uh, sort of like five hitman, five hitmen are gathered okay. together to protect this one particular uh, like triad overlord. And that's really uh, great because it sort of shows uh, Toe's other style, not the sort of like over the top action stylistics, but the sort of thing that ties him in to sort of like uh, Hollywood directors of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, sort of craftsmen like uh, Sam Fuller, Anthony Mann, like Howard Hawks, because they're all sort of about this idea of like bonding, like mm -hmm. people like faced with this insurmountable task and like bonding with one another over it, like the mission, for instance. Uh, it's like about the hitman, and so their bosses are always off in various meetings, but the film never follows the bosses out, so you never know what's going on. It just sort of is stuck with the guys, like, like waiting. So you're, you're also showing Exiled, which is sort of ish a sequel to The Mission, which is came out played theatrically here about a year ago. But exactly, yeah, and so that one's set in uh, Macau, the Portuguese colony. Uh, Johnny Toe has this great idea, for instance, that. He works with so many stars, and so many of the stars are in the same gangster movie type things over and over again. Mm -hmm. So he always says it's important to give them something new to do. Mm -hmm. you know, so all his films have something in it that you haven't really seen before. So Exiled is all in Macau. There's also another great sort of bonding scene where like two, people, like two groups of hitmen are out to kill one another while protecting another, either protecting or killing another person. So at one point they all put their guns down and just have a nice little dinner and talk amongst mm -hmm. themselves. That's a common thing in Breaking News, one of his other films that we're showing cool. that has a similar thing, sort of taking time out from the violence. To Maybe you can tell people the website who want to look sure. up more about the program. Definitely. It's a uh, Berkeley Art Museum, Pacific Film Archive, uh, bam.berkeley, oh sorry, bampfa dot berkeley dot edu. But it's easiest just to uh, Google Pacific Film Archive. Great. Well, thanks for being on the show and telling sure, us no all problem, about guys. Johnny Toe. Great, thanks. And now we're going to look at a clip from Thrillville's next upcoming film, uh, Bare Knuckles. This is recorded. Hey, baby, you got anything for me? Well, we had to wait for the blood sample. Oh, oh, for you. Thank you, beautiful. We can't control the lab. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, yes, we've got this sucker. About time. Type this up, will you, Madge? This is fine. 
Officer, would you read this gentleman his rights, please? And then book him? Now, wait a minute. Now, you wait a minute. I got you, punk, and I got you dirty. So just play out the game. You know the rules. Get him out of here. Come on, let's go. Food. I'll be back out on the bricks in one hour, and I'll be looking for you. You, you do that. From the looks of you, you better hope you don't find him. Come on, let's go. Get out of here. Go. Well, what are you waiting for, bounty hunter? A gold star? Nah. The reward will do. Well, you'll have to fill out the civilian arrest form. Oh, very good. I see you remember all our little rules around here. Too bad you never play by them out there. You know something, Kane? There's really no difference between you and the crud you drag in here. No difference at all. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah? What's that? He's in there. I'm out here. And with us now are Monica and Will Vajaro from Thrillville. And uh, Will, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Bare Knuckles and why that's a special movie for you to be showing. Well, Thrillville, for 11 years, I've been showcasing everything B, B movies, you know, Beast, Breast, Blood, Beatniks, Black Exploitation, Bikers, Bare Knuckles. Uh, this has been my holy grail because the, uh, the chap there and the mustache and the cool jacket is my old man, Robert Fajaro, who's quite um, ashamed of this film. Uh, he doesn't share my pride um, in this, uh, this particular segment of his career. Uh, this is the ultimate 70s flick. It's got, uh, he, he plays Zachary Kane, modern day bounty hunter. His partner is John Daniels, who was also in a lot of famous, uh, in my circles, black exploitation films like Candy Tangerine Man. And he plays a guy named Black. Uh, there's a motorcycle riding kung fu serial killer, uh, played by Michael Height. Uh, Sherry Jackson, I think from the Danny Thomas show, is his love interest. They wind up in a hot tub, I think. Uh, it's got every 70s cliche, and the guy who did the soundtrack, I actually have the LP, uh, <coughs> used to uh, score porn flicks. <laughs> so um, it's got everything, something for everyone. And the director, or Don no Edmonds, is well known Don in Edmonds, exploitation infamous, circles. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Isla, She Wolf of the SS, and many other classics. <laughs> and so. you're going to be showing this at? Bare Knuckles on a double bill, double thrill bill with Return to Macon County, which is Nick Nolte's first flick, uh, and a young Don Johnson. My father is a cop in this one, but he's a crazy cop, chasing him through the rural south. Uh, double bill, uh, May 8th at the Parkway Speakeasy Theater, so, which is a real grindhouse. Right. So we got beer, pizza. We've been robbed a couple times. So <laughs> perfect. And I mean, there there's so much eclectic programming, which is really fantastic, uh, happening at the Parkway That's and the Cerrito. True. Perhaps you can talk about some of the other programs that go well, on there. Well, Thrillville is kind of my personal uh, hobby. It's kind of my, my. It's the first thing I did for Kyle and Catherine Fisher, who were the owners of the of the both speakeasy theaters. The first thing they asked me to do was create and host a midnight movie series. And as I got older, midnight became nine o'clock on Thursdays. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of, that's, it's very subjective. Uh, and I, you know, I've shown all these, these different cult genres, but I also am responsible for all the programming at the Cerrito and the Parkway Speakeasy Theaters. And we cast a pretty wide net demographic wise. Uh, the common denominator of course is pizza and beer, but you know, we have an African diaspora series. We do the Rocky Horror Picture Show mm -hmm. every week at the Parkway. We have a number of fundraisers and benefits. We have a local filmmaker showcase. Uh, we do film festivals. I've, I programmed a few film war festivals there with my friend Eddie Muller. Uh, so, you know, we try to appeal to everyone and to, you know, just in order to stay in business. Basically. Have there been any programs? Obviously, the Bare Knuckles one is going to be an exciting night, but what other yeah, highlights yeah. have you had over the years? For Thrillville, the, uh, we have, we've had Bob Wilkins on there a few times. He mm -hmm. hosted Creature Features locally. Uh, Shatfest, my annual tribute to William Shatner, is always a, a thrill. It's, a it thrill. sells out usually within like the first right. 15 minutes. Right. Hopefully I'm showing White Comanche this year, which is a spaghetti western. He plays uh, twin uh, Indians, uh, Indian, uh, Indian twins, one good, one evil. Native and American. I mean, yeah. they're not, Excuse me. They're yes. not from India. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how your lovely assistant helps you. Right? Pre-Star Trek. My wife and William Dominatrix. Shatner. Yes, <laughs> it is. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then we, I and just, I, I just showed, Hooker. I just showed Incubus, oh, wow. Incubus, which is is yes. uh, all Esperanto. Esperanto. Film. Yes. Mm -hmm. My father, Robert Vajara, was on T.J. Hooker. I haven't seen that episode. I think he's had it suppressed. But <laughs> yeah, my father and Shatner on the same. 
in the same uh, really frame. And is. you've had some really interesting special guests over the years. Ray Dennis Steckler, uh, you know, famous again in my circles for Incredible Strange Creatures and Thrill Killers. Uh, Yvonne Craig is a good friend of ours, also known as Batgirl. I had Yvonne Craig and Gary Lockwood at the theater once for It Happened at the World's Fair because we're big Elvis fans. Neither one had ever seen it and they're both in it and they lasted about 10 minutes and they went back in the lobby to sign pictures. Yeah. So. They still, Actually, they still haven't seen it. Elvis is somewhat responsible for your meeting, right? Yes. Right. When Will first started, um, he was doing the midnight show. He was just getting divorced. His first wife, wife was his first lovely assistant. Yeah, or we, ser we served beer, and she was uh, she was an AA, so it didn't work so out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or, as Will likes to say, once he decided to become a, a, a lounge loser, he knew he needed an ex-wife. So got it over with. Yeah. So I came to a friend of mine said they're showing Jailhouse Rock at midnight. I got there. Uh, I have a. Elvis tattoo on my back. Navajo, I sh Navajo Elvis. It's a Navajo symbol that says Elvis in the middle. I sh happened to show it to Will and some other people, and he was pulling girls out of the audience to spin the wheel. So he's like, hey, how about the girl with the tattoo? And um, we've been together yeah, ever since. was auditioning for girlfriends and lovely assistants and wives. At the same time. She got all three of them, all three <laughs> gigs. Yeah. So, yeah. so here we are. Thank the king. All right. Yeah. Do you have <laughs> any other upcoming highlights for May or June that you Thrillville, want to? Thrillville, it's pretty eclectic. Uh, and I rotate Thrillville between Cerrito and Parkway Speakeasy Theaters now. And June is uh, King Kong Escapes. That's the, uh, the Japanese classic where he fights Mecha Kong. <laughs> uh, July and July, I'm doing a Jubilee with Meshuggah Beach Party and uh, everything you always want to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask. And then, of course, we're back to Elvis. August for D-Day, Elvis D-Day is another thing I do every year, uh, showing Blue Hawaii for the first time with peanut butter banana sandwiches on the menu. Yes, awesome. Excellent. And it's never just a movie screening. Like uh, we have burlesque. Have. We have bands. Like I said, we have Meshuggah Beach Party in July. Uh, with Bare Knuckles, we have the Twilight Vixen Review. Uh, in June, we have Apocalypse on Now with King Kong Escapes, and I'm probably going to have some uh, hula dancers with Blue Hawaii in uh, Perfect. August. Perfect. And often he brings in other movie hosts like um, oh, Mr. Lobo. Mr. Lobo. Of Cinema Insomnia has co-hosted a bunch of a bunch of shows. And yeah. Over the years, we've had the Devilettes and Kitten on the Keys and Project Pimento. A lot of local uh, bands uh, in the whole you know tiki lounge scene. And what Will does really well is cr try to create an entire evening. So usually the band the burlesque dancers, whoever it is, goes along with the whole theme of the night. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's in retrospect I put that theme together. Well, then it, with enough beer, there's a theme no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah, so. it doesn't matter anyway. No so for people who <laughs> want to see the program, the website is? www.thrillville.net. Great. Great. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. And Aloha. now we're going to look at one of our film recommendations for May, a clip from Bigger, Stronger, Faster. There you go, just like that. Good, give me some good abs, Christian. That's it. I saw Conan the Barbarian when I was 11. And uh, at that moment, I said, that's exactly what I want to do. And I started to study Arnold and his achievements. So I started training with weights when I was 14. I started taking steroids when I was 16. So you're advertising a supplement. So a guy like me goes and looks in the magazine, and I see Christian Boving, and I'm like, wow, man, I want to look like that guy. So I go and take HydroxyCut or some supplement because I think that I'm going to look like you, but what I don't know is that you were taking steroids. Do you have any problem with that? That's a double-edged sword, my friend. Uh, how to answer this? If somebody looks at an ad with me in it and says, the well, Christian Boving takes hydroxycut, which I did, and I do, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't take something else. Mm -hmm. And if they choose to believe that that's the only thing I'm taking to look like that, then so be it. They should be smarter. And that was a clip from the documentary Bigger, Stronger, Faster, which is from filmmaker Christopher Bell. Uh, it was a big hit at the Sundance Film Festival, and it's going to be opening here in May. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all about, of course, as you could see, steroid use in America, which is a very timely topic, what with all the um, roided out professional athletes that yes, we have. Yes, getting um, in trouble. <laughs> and also pop culture, obviously, a clip from a little Arnold Schwarzenegger movie in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's put together entertainingly, but also informative. and. Uh, features the filmmaker's two brothers who are steroid users who are nicknamed Mad Dog and Smelly. So, um, Excellent. memorable characters, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, speaking uh, of our governor? I have so many favorites. Oh. I mean, it's hard to pick. Terminator, I guess. Uh -huh. um, Total Recall, I'm a big fan of. Total Recall is great. Um, can't say I voted for him, right. but uh, I certainly have watched, you know, even sort of the lesser um, movies such as Eraser many times. <laughs> yeah, and Twins, and uh, even the one, I can't remember the one that was set in Russia, but it was pretty bad. There's no way you watch Twins more than once. No. Okay. No, once is enough. <laughs> What's your favorite? Um, probably, Conan? yeah. Conan? Pro Conan's good, mm. uh, but the Terminator series, and I guess yeah. the Grace Jones was in the second one with him. 
That was oh, Conan yeah. the Destroyer. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, if he ever gets out of office, maybe we'll get King Conan. Yeah. Well, I'm Fingers looking crossed. forward to seeing Bigger, Stronger, Faster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the other May releases that I'm particularly fond of is the Alexander Sokorov film, Alexandra, and we're going to see a clip from that right now. А почему ты грязный такой? Подлый весь, ну смотри. Ну что это такое, а? Посмотри, почему форма старая. Почему такая старая? Ну вот, не может. Пойдем постирать. Ну хочешь постирать, постирай. Бабуль, все потом, все потом. Давай переодевайся. Да. Я умываю. Да. А, Скажу, где туалет и умывание. Пойдем погуляем, что ли? Полотенце забыл. Давай. Держи. Alexandra is Alexander Sokarov's latest film. He's probably the preeminent director in Russia right now. And as the clip kind of insinuated, it's about uh, an older woman who goes to visit her grandson who's fighting in the front in Chechnya. Beautiful film, amazingly shot. The actress there is a famous opera singer in Russia. And the story involves her walking around the base and also leaving the base to go and speak with the local women who are disturbed about the war. Coming out in May, highly recommended. Is this your favorite Sokorov film or do you have others? Uh, I think Father and Son is also very good, but this is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. What else we got coming up? Well, we've got at the Castro, they're showing Godard's Contempt, uh, and uh, PFA is showing the 15 and a half hour Fassbender Berlin Alexander plots. Great, action packed. Yep. Well, we'll have another action packed show next month, and you can always tune in to sf360.org for daily updates on the San Francisco film scene. Thanks for watching.